me. I think the mere fact that I'm standing in front of many of my friends will be a huge surprise. Because anybody who knows me will know that I'm not particularly drawn to children. Okay, I'm not I'm just not really good with them, not really. Okay, I think my dad they get older, my kids know that. So I'm getting better with them these days. Now so for some of you who is not related to kids, why did I write a parenting book? Okay? It is the exact reason why I can. It's because I think I'm able to take myself out of this whole circus, you know, of being a parent, I must do this, I must do that. But at the beginning, did I do that? Yes. Because I was so worried that I'm not doing a good job. So I observe what people do. I'm worried about what they think. And I got sick of it. Because I'm constantly trying to meet their expectations. It's just, I think 90% of this room knows that I, I just don't function that way. You cannot tell me what to do. You can ask me and I'll think about it. So if I decide that yes, this is what I want to do, I'll do it. So as a result, after I lived in Australia for 7-8 years, I had the pleasure of having a very, very good sister-in-law. She loves children. Like, she don't care whether it's hers or not, as long as it's a child that will do. So she just loves kids and she's so good with them, right? So, how did I survive a time without a helper? Because my friends will come and visit and say, Oh my God, you poor thing, I'll need to do it. I go to my sister-in-law's, have a couple of drinks, <laughs> and it's all good. Okay, that's what we do. Okay, so let's, let's be honest. Moms would know we need to have a couple of things. Okay? Then you'll be you'll be fine, you learn to relax and you see them in a different light. So after I moved back to Singapore, something that stood out was it, it, they're just so different. How people treat children here and how the children are treated there is different. Is it good or bad? No, not really. Whatever they do there, some things are gonna agree. Like you just run loose, you do whatever you want, you can stay up on the lake you like. Children need structure, that's what I learned as well. Okay. It comes from the very basic, the first day they're born. We have been taught to swaddle them. Okay? But a lot of moms will say, they don't like it, they struggle and they get out, and they cry when they do it. Yes, because they will struggle. Children will fight the boundaries given to them. But they like that. So that's how I got my kids to sleep overnight all the time. You wrap them tight and you just put them to bed. Okay? So for somebody who's got anybody who's got newborn or planning to have another one, please just wrap them tight and put them to bed. They will be fine. Okay? If you wrap tight for nine months in your tummy, they will be good. You'll be happy then. Alright? So they're not struggling, they're not unhappy. Okay? So after the struggles I've had, I keep thinking, if I want to write something, will I want but I'll try, I'll try. So I'll send a few drafts out to publishers. And then Chick got reply. And I chose him because of the exact tagline he had on his web page. Write your story. I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to write my story. Not someone else telling me what to say. Because besides him, someone else responded as well. I won't say who. So when I went in with Curly, Right at the back. I'm telling you, if it's not for her and not for Andrea who introduced us, I wouldn't be standing here. Because I keep telling her, I can't do this anymore. She said, Yes, you can. Just sit down and just do it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. So, the other publisher wanted me to change my story. No, no, no. Can you twist it like that? Can you just write it a bit like that? No, I don't think so. So, uh, no, no, don't like this one. So we start with him, and uh, when he said, I'm going to make you work hard, was he kidding? No. But was he that tough? Not really either. You see, he doesn't slave drive me to you and finish this by then. He doesn't, but he poses me very challenging tasks. Like one day he just turned out and he said, I need to write a poem. Okay, then I freaked out. No, I don't, I don't even read poetry. So, where, where do I start? Uh, 
draw this, I'll just write it. And you think it's not going to happen. So just try and it happens again. Okay. It's all good. So we did, and that was what happened. I can read the poem. Do you want me to read the poem? <laughs> So what you find in this book is very, very basic. Sometimes it's so basic, right, that we forget. Okay. My eyes are not good too. <laughs> Alright, so the title of the poem is I Will Find a Way. The moment I met you, I knew I had to give you my all. But where do I even begin? Do I choose my protectiveness over your resilience? Do I choose my ego over your happiness? Do I choose my authority over your autonomy? Will I spur or start your growth? Dare I break out of my own prison so you can be free? Change is frightening, seemingly dysfunctional. Within me, I need to overcome it. I need courage and belief to see with faith the impossible possible. With wisdom, hope and love, I will find a way to be the mature, loving and affirming presence you so deserve. I love you, my precious child. should do about raising kids. You know what? Do it your way. Okay? Don't do what your parents used to do. That's, that's passe already. It's over. But we are afraid. We're worried that what if, you know, my parents raised me this way right now, okay? Are you really? Okay. What are we teaching them if we keep following what we have been doing before? We're telling them you cannot break out, you cannot change. So it is okay, you know, to treat them individually. Okay? So the most important part I feel about raising a child is to just let them be who they are. Do it your own way. Listen to advice by all means, but only take what you want to take. Because that it worked for them, it may not work for you. And they're, they're very resilient, they're not going to break. It's what you say and the intention behind what you say that will determine what happens. So it's the same thing as smacking. I do it. But I used to do it when you were little. So if you read that section, you would understand why. When there's no reasoning, you're going to do conditioning. That's the only way. It's the safest way. So the safety, more than pleasure. So, do what you don't Go on and on. I'm the biggest attention, so I can go on and on and on and on. Okay, so maybe we'd like to invite my husband to see if you see anything. Hello. Um, this is all a bit of a surprise. I be here today. Um, well, actually, I was supposed to be here, but I did tell my wife that I wasn't going to be able to make it, and it had hopefully a pleasant surprise on Thursday night when I turned up at the door and said, hey, press not here. Um, I guess um, when Chinka invited me to write something in the book, then uh, half of, I suppose, the parenting team that we have for our children. I kind of think long and hard about it and, and what I should write. And, you know, I, I came from Australia, for those of you who don't guess my accent, and I you know, raised in you know, middle suburbia, four, my parents were baby boomers, um, one of four kids. So, you know, we, we were quite resourceful um, and we had to learn to share a lot. So, I think the fundamental thing that I got from my parenting, which I chose, that I wanted to share with my kids, is you know, one fundamental, which is just time. 
Now time is, I think everyone's in this room's most precious resource. Um, we strive to get everything we need to get done in a day. We usually extend over into the night. And, um, and it's the one thing that I appreciate as a child, a child was my parents dedicated time to me, being one of four children. So it wasn't the new cricket bat they bought me or a video game, it was you know, one on one time with either of my parents, them coming to important events of mine, whether sporting or academically, or sporting academically. Um, but it was that, it was just purely sharing those moments and which created a sense of worth and feeling special in their eyes. You know what my children feel. Um, that's pretty much what I want to say. I just want to say I'm very proud of my life. Yeah. Um, I'm a biggest fan. And, um, and I hope this is one of maybe many to come. And um, a special thank you to Sheena for believing in her and giving her a chance. And obviously, um, they were the time and supported of the journey. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, the next part is supposed to be, uh, yeah. Now we, we were going to ask the boys to come up and talk about, you know, what is the difference.